Okay, so I did a video the other day on remote desktop anywhere, and uh, this is my Pi, which I can leave on all the time, and it allows me to do remote desktop, and if I go over to my iPad, you can see that I'm running the remote desktop on here. Uh, you can see I've got some Pi apps to update. Uh, so this is connected via the internet, not via my local network, and, uh, and it absolutely works fine. Uh, and I tried this at work, uh, if I just go into screen capture, and I couldn't get it to work initially, uh, but a colleague suggested I try a VPN. So I've got TunnelBear, it's a VPN that gives you 500 meg free every month, and it works absolutely fine. Uh, as soon as I turned that on, the remote desktop worked, and actually surprisingly worked really quite fast. So I was on uh, a reasonably fast Wi-Fi network, obviously my Pi at home was on a Wi-Fi network, and I managed to log in, and I was just playing around with it on my lunch break, just having a look at it. But I did find a, a useful reason for using this, and on my phone, I downloaded the latest version of Manjaro, which you'd have seen in, in my previous video. Uh, so I downloaded it with the desktop, and I saved it on my server. So basically, I went into the browser using my phone. Uh, it's a tiny screen, but it actually is perfectly functional just close down that Pi Apps update. So this is now working as remote desktop. I'm in the same house, but it is doing it over the internet, so it's, it's how it works. So I wanted to download something small, so let's do something like some wallpaper, uh, just 1080. Just pick any old thing that I can just save. So that looks quite nice. View file. And I'm using my uh, Bluetooth mouse, uh, which also works with my Pi with a dongle. It's a really good mouse. I've shown it in other videos. So say this one here, if I right click this image, uh, save image as. So remember, I was doing this all on my phone. So I've got public on my cloud and remote downloads. I've already been in that, fo in that folder where I've saved something. So if I hit save and then go back here, and go into public. I've got a folder here that remote downloads. And you can see I've got the Manjaro that I downloaded the other day, uh, and I've also got the desktop wallpaper. So it's a really good way of being able to download things when you're not at home, just to get it on your local network. So this is much later now. I've been to work and I've come back. Uh, you'll notice if you look at the clock, there was a change. Uh, it's all still stayed in exactly the same state as it was before. I really like that. Uh, so you can come back to it whenever you like. Uh, if I go into terminal and press up on the keyboard, oh, NeoFetch actually, yeah, let's see how long this has been up and running. So six hours, 28 minutes. I had it on for a couple of days or so before, and it was absolutely fine. Uh, but the thing I wanted to show is the config.txt, because there's one other thing that I've changed in here. So if I scroll down, to this bit. In the previous video, I showed that I underclocked, so this is minus four over underscore voltage. Uh, I also set the arm frequency, so the maximum was a thousand, and it seems to work absolutely fine with that. Um, but I've also added this. Uh, so instead of it toggling back to 600, it now toggles back to 400 when it's idle. Um, so basically, if I go down to the bottom here, uh, you'll see that it's on 500 and goes back down to 400. And I did that as a sort of power saving thing, really, because uh, I was thinking about how much power the Pi used. A lot of the time it would be idle, and so I figured if I use a lower clock speed, it's going to use less power. And back to using less power in a minute. Some of you may have seen right at the start of the video something on the desk which is going to enable me to use less power than before. So I downloaded Manjaro on my always on Pi when I wasn't at the computer, which I thought was very impressive. Uh, now if I search for it on any computer on my local network, I can write the image to an SD card, which is what I did, I've already done it, but just to show you how I did it. Uh, so you can see here, I've got this folder and Manjaro's in here and desktop wallpaper. Uh, I've mounted the drive on this so you can see that it's showing up at the moment. But if I try and do Raspberry Pi Imager, and this works the same in Raspberry Pi OS and Twister, it doesn't actually seem to let me uh, write the image from my NAS drive, which is weird because it does on my Mac. Uh, I've got Raspberry Pi Imager on my Mac, and when I do Choose OS and Use Custom, it allowed me to select that operating system. But on here, there's probably a way of doing it um, because you can go through all the folders and everything, but I couldn't find a logical way of doing it nice and quick. But I did find in this version of Ubuntu Mate, if I right click on the image, I can open with Disk Image Writer. 
So instead of using Raspberry Pi Imager, in this case, I could do that and then write it to an SD card or a USB stick. Anyway, back to the power side of this remote desktop. So my idea was one of these, uh, which is basically a network smart plug. And uh, this, I can plug the Pi into this and I can turn it on and off uh, with Alexa or Google Assistant, but I can also use the Tapo app when I'm away from it to be able to switch it on and off, which I thought would be a lower power solution than using the Pi on all the time. So here's the one I bought from Amazon. Uh, so if I click on that and I go into the questions bit and type in consumption. So it says here, the nominal power consumption for smart plugs is 10 milliamps to 50 milliamps. So pretty low power. Uh, and if I go on to the Raspberry Pi documentation, I don't know if I can find it with putting in consumption on it, because this is one long page with all the information. So if you control F and do a search for consumption, yeah, here we go, look, it's found it here. Uh, and this is where you see that older Pis used to use uh, a lot less power. But here it's talking about 600 milliamps for the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It may be less running at idle at 400, but uh, I haven't got a way of testing it really. Um, but uh, yeah, so I figured this smart plug is going to be lower power than using my Pi 4. And it's going to be more secure if the computer is mostly off and I only turn it on when I need it. But I have been looking at other options because some people have been saying that uh, there are more secure ways of doing this remote desktop. I think it's still pretty good because it is password protected, but I did need to open a port on my router. So I'm going to look at other ways of doing that. But for now, I just want to play around with this smart plug. And nice thing about it, uh, obviously it's a UK plug, this one. Um, it's nice and slim. It's about the same uh, width as a normal plug. So it doesn't mean that it obscures other plugs that are there. Uh, and you've got a basic instruction book and a QR code. So if I let my iPad read the QR code and go to that site, uh, open up the app. Tapo would like to find and connect to devices on your local network, so I better plug it in. But before I do that, I need to switch off my Pi. So if I call up the keyboard and do uh, Control Alt and Delete, and you can see the shutdown option has come up, so let's shut that down. Oh, and it wants me to put in the password to shut that down. Okay, so it looks like I need to create an account with Tapo. And they sent me this email, click to finish registration. Your TP-Link ID has been activated. Okay, so tap to add devices. And I need to add permission. There we go, Tapo. And local network. And I've already given permission. Oh wow, here we go. So mine's the basic one, the P100. Would like to use Bluetooth, okay. So I plugged it in a few minutes ago. I'm just, it's in an awkward place because it's out of the way and it is flashing orange to green. So already orange and green. Tapo is looking for your Tapo device. Couldn't find, nice. That's found it this time. So tell it my Wi-Fi network, the main one I use is the uh, five gigahertz one at the top. Now it's connecting to my Wi-Fi and that's all done. Device name. So I'm gonna call it Tapo Remote Pi. Wherever you placed it, choose an icon. You can see the sort of things people use these for. Kettles and toasters and uh, coffee machines, radios. So you can turn on a radio on a timer or turn on a radio when you're not there. Obviously lights. I think I'm just going to use the standard smart plug one. Check firmware. So there's an update for this device. So let's get that to do that now. Congratulations, your tapper device is up to date and ready for use. So I'm not too worried about getting it to work with Alexa or Google Assistant because this is more for when I'm not at home. Uh, I'll probably set that up at a different time. And got it. Uh, here we go. So I guess it's off at the moment because there's no the symbol, the power symbol looks like it's off. So this is my home app. So I'll have this on my iPhone and my iPad. So let's press the button. And I heard a little click. And I'll give it a few minutes to start up. Okay, that'll probably do. Let's go into remote desktop and tap on my Pi, put my password in, and here we are. So it's managed to turn it on and it's all working. So if I switch it off, I can now remotely turn that off as well. And hit OK. So that shut it down. Let's give it a few seconds to shut down and go back into the Tapo app. You can see from the power switch that it's still turned on. And let's switch that off. Yeah, and I heard it click to say that it turned off. 
Well, that was nice and easy. I don't know what the smart actions bit is. Looks like you can set up like macros to, to do a, a certain amount of functions. So what have we got? Uh, turn on the lights at sunset. So if I do plus, uh, here we go. Look. So just put test in here. So when with one tap, trigger ask manually, trigger time, trigger tasks at a set time. So if I do that one, so custom time, seven o'clock, you can do the same day every week, every Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. Oh, I see, you can add all of them in, or you can just take out any ones you don't want. So let's say done, add tasks, control tapper devices, and it shows up my tapper remote Pi, so my smart plug, turn on, turn off, turn on, off. And then you can turn it on for a certain duration as well. This is cool for uh, if you were setting it to control lights if you're going on holiday, so it looks like someone's in. Yeah, very impressive. So I don't want that. So if I, yeah, I can slide and delete that and delete and go back to home and then I can switch on my Pi. So there's a load of things on here. Let's, so we've got outdoor security camera. That's a twin set of plugs. A four set of plugs, 26.99. Okay, so I've started the Tapo app on my phone. Uh, I just had to log in, but my phone remembered all the username and the password. And uh, you can see that it's showing up. Uh, when I turned off Wi-Fi and switched over to 4G, so as if I wasn't in the house, first of all, it said connection unavailable. Uh, but then I refresh the setting by pulling down the screen. And after about 10 seconds, it shows up. And you can see that it's now available and I can switch off my Pi. But before I do that, I would want to shut it down properly using the remote desktop. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.